Okay, so we are continuing on with work. Uh, and in work, we have to deal with our equation that we used yesterday. That equation was work is equal to force times the displacement times cosine of the angle. Now, the angle, that's what this little symbol is. All right, you need to note that this is the, it is the angle between force and displacement. Okay, again, I gave you two examples yesterday where you have, let's say, something being pulled in this direction at, let's just say, 30 degrees. This is the force, and it moves in this direction, in which case you are going to use the angle. And then there was a second part where they said, okay, you have a roller coaster on a track at whatever, 35 degrees. Okay, you would actually, the angle for this problem would be, yeah, 30. Now for this one, it is like the chain, all right, is the force that pulls this cart up, all right, the beginning, um, beginning ramp or whatever of a roller coaster. So it's moving on that straight track in the same direction of the force. So in this case, you would not use the 35 degrees as your angle. It's because the it's the angle between F and D, and they're in the same direction. So the angle there would equal zero degrees. All right. Now moving on, what we're going to do here is um, off to this side, I need you guys to just do me a favor. We're going to write this. I'm going to do a small little coordinate plane. So make sure you guys are writing this in, please. Make sure we're writing this in, please, and not on our cell phones. You have zero degrees. If your object, whichever direction your object is moving and you have a force in that direction, that will be your zero degrees. You can call the first piece here 90 degrees, opposite 180 and you can even call this one 270 or 90 degrees below. It's whatever. Okay, so we need those. We definitely need those. All right, and hopefully you guys have your calculators so we can practice typing in our cosine, sine and cosine. So the first thing I want you guys to do is... I want you to, if they have a free body diagram like these problems do, I want you to draw in what direction the distance is going. So in this problem, 10 Newton force is applied to push a block across a frictionless surface for a displacement of 5 meters to the right. So I'm going to just draw that in over here. I'm going to draw this in D equals 5 meters to the right. And why is that important? Okay, well, the applied force, if the distance is in this direction, the applied force is to the right, so it's zero degrees. So this applied force has an angle between, all right, that and the displacement of zero degrees. What about the normal force? What about the normal force? If it's going straight up, well, that would be what degree? 90. 90. Very good. And if it's going straight down from that, this one is 270. Now, what do we do next? Okay, so the normal force was how much? 20, 20 newtons. The applied force is 10, and the gravitational force, all right? which is basically weight, 20 newtons. How far did it move? Five meters to the right. So work is equal to F times D times cosine theta, the angle. Now what we need to do is you guys need to type these into your calculators. So. If you have this calculator, first one you're going to do is 20 times 5 
times, uh, Mr. Lombardo, I forgot how to get to the cosine part on this. So on this calculator, above the 7, it's the second button above the 7, you see PRB. Oh, I don't want to hit that. Let me hit clear. I want to hit second, then that. And then your sine and inverse sine, cosine, inverse, cosine, uh, tangent, and inverse tangent functions show up. You scroll over until you find cosine, click enter, and then just type in whatever the angle is. The angle is 90. And then hit equals. All right, so we should have zero joules there. Next one, 10 times 5 times cosine of 0. And I get 50 joules. Okay, the, the last one, 20 times 5 times cosine of 270, I get 0. Huh? Um, it's kind of just part of like the cosine function. Zero degrees, cosine of zero is one. This is zero. This is negative one. This is zero down here. Um, and like in between, it's like fractions of in between one and zero. It's just kind of how, how it work, that works. And sine is flipped. So like this would be one and one or negative one. This would be zero and zero for sine. Okay, so now they wanted to know the total work done on this whole thing. So 0 plus 50 plus 0 is just 50 joules. Yes, sir. So again, work is equal to force times displacement times cosine theta. Remember that theta just means the angle. Okay, first thing you should do with this, guys, is figure out the direction it's moving. So letter B, uh, 10 Newton frictional force slows a moving block to a stop along a horizontal surface after displacement of 5 meters to the right. So what I'm doing is I'm going to draw in D. as five meters to the right. Now, if that is my the case here, friction force, because it's moving to the right, that's the direction. All right, we got to place zero. If it was moving straight up, we would rotate this thing. So then like 0 would be up top, then 90, then 180, then 270, if, if it were rotated. Okay, let's write in all of our forces. Normal force, how many newtons? Good. Gravity. Friction. How far did they all move? Yes, 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 5 meters. Now we got to think of the angles. All right, do we have anything that's zero? Nope, because it's not in the same direction as the distance, which would be going this way. Do we have a 90 degree? Going, that would be the one going up, so my normal force is 90. Gravitational force, what would we say that is? Okay, good, 270. And friction force. 180 is correct. All right, so now we got to just type these things in. 20 times 5 times cosine of 90. I should get 0 here. 20 times 5 times cosine of 270. Should be 0. Yes, sir? Yes, because cosine of 0... Uh, uh, because 90, cosine of 90 and 270 are 0, when you have them here, they are going to be 0. Because anything times 0 is that. Now, if it was 91, right, or 271, now you're actually going to get a value. Then you would actually get a value. It's very, very tiny, but 
you would still get a value. And then 10 times 5 times cosine of 180 is equal to negative 50. So when we add these all together, you get a total net work done of negative 50 joules. And it's being it's work done by this force. All right, and it's basically negative work. Can you can think of it almost like slowing it down? Okay, next one. First thing I need to do is figure out direction. direction. Okay, good. So let's read it. Ten newton force is applied to push a block across a frictional surface at a constant speed. Now, constant speed is important to note because constant speed means that all the forces have to be equal. So you have 20 up, 20 down, 10 left, 10 right. And you'll see that if that's the case, you're going to wind up with, for the most part, zero work being done on the object if everything's in, at a constant. OK. So, and the displacement was five meters to the right. So I'm going to draw in here an arrow. Five meters to the right. Now, drawing this in five meters to the right, let me just bring back up my little coordinate plane thingy again. Zero, 90. 180, 270. Okay. It's force times distance times cosine of the angle. What is my normal force? 20. Applied force, gravitational force, and frictional force. How far did this thing move? They all moved here, right? Five meters. And the angles. Okay, so if the object is moving to the right, all right, that's where we place the zero. So if it's going to the right, we place zero to the right. Cool? All right. So applied force will be at zero degrees. So I'm going to find W applied. That's zero degrees. Straight up from that will be normal force, and that is 90 degrees. Friction force is the opposite. Now, just make sure you're putting it in the right spot. You don't want to accidentally put it in the wrong spot. And then the gravitational force here, 270. All right, so like Sean had mentioned, he saw the pattern. A cosine of 90 and 270 degrees give us zero. Zero degrees gives us a one and 180 degrees gives us a negative one. So cosine of 90 is zero. Anything times zero is zero. 10 times five times the cosine of zero Cosine of zero is one, so 10 times five times one, 50 joules. 20 times five times cosine of, neg or of 270. Cosine of 270 is zero, so anything times zero is zero. And friction, 10 times five times the cosine of 180. Cosine of 180 is negative one. So 10 times five is 50, but 50 times negative one would just be negative 50. Now you can type those in as well. So if we add all these together, I have 0, positive 50, 0, negative 50. What does that total come out to be? That's right. And you can have 0 work done on an object. All right, that's definitely telling you that the object is not going to be accelerating. If, if the work is 0, okay, the object is not going to be accelerating. So the object above this is accelerating, but it's in this case, it's slowing down. All right, that's what it's talking about there. 
Um, the first one, okay, was applied to a frictionless surface. So if there's no force against the applied and the top two balance out, this has a positive net force. Therefore, yeah, it's going to accelerate. We have positive work done. It's going to accelerate. Net work of zero, object's not going to accelerate. Okay, this one. Oh, boy. What do we do here? Uh, two kilogram object sliding at a constant speed across a frictionless surface for a displacement of what? Five meters to the right. So whatever direction D is. Guys, we should make sure we're writing this down. Please, not, not doing any other stuff. Okay. All right, so the rule is whatever the direction our distance is going, we're going to say that is zero. Okay, then we could go around the world, 90, 180, 270. So please make sure you draw that in next to it. Okay, now, what do we got to do? All right, well, how about we just start with this? Good, right? So the normal force is 20. And the gravity. Okay, how far did this move? Five meters. And five meters. Very good. Now the angles. All right, so the normal force, that one, is 90 degrees. And the next one good is 270. Very good. Okay, because the direction that the distance is moving, we make zero. And then we kind of play around with everything else from that. So 90 is going to be going up, 270 is going down. And if you type those into your calculator, I'm just going to do them super, super quickly. 20 times 5 times cosine of 90, 0. And 20 times 5 times cosine of 270, also 0. So when we add them together, we get a net work done of 0. I don't know why I put the plus sign right there. And does that make sense? Well, yeah. All right. It's constant speed. And it goes with one of our definitions that if force isn't, if there's no part of the force that's in the same direction as the distance that it's moving, it no work is being done, right? So the idea was like, oh, if I held like a bunch of grocery bags and I'm just like holding them with my arms shrugged, and I walk from the car to the, you know, into the house. The, the force applied, whoop, let me see if I can do that. The force that I'm applying on the bags is upwards, but I'm walking in this direction. And so because no part of the force is even like slightly at an angle where we can say, okay, it's this part of the force that's in the same direction. If it's perfectly 90 degrees, Definitely not happening, and therefore, no work is being done, even though you're exerting an effort, for sure. Okay, let's flip it over. Here we go. Yes, sir. The first column would be both 20, but the first, that's not what the first thing you want to do is. What is the first thing you want to do is determine, yeah, what direction the displacement is going. What direction is it going? For letter E? Yep, so this object is being pulled upward. So that, all right, upward at a constant speed of this force, uh, or at a constant speed by a force of this, and it has a vertical displacement of five meters. So this case, guys, 
D is going up. So in this case, D is moving up. And we said we said that this is going up. And whatever direction our distance or displacement is, we want to make what degree? Zero. Zero. So if we shift our coordinate plane a little bit. The top would be going zero. And then you can go around like counterclockwise. 90 degrees, 180, and 270. OK. Now, now we can do our F, D, cosine, theta. So what is the force? All right, for the tension. Okay, good. Twenty newtons. And what about my force of gravity? Very good. How far did this thing move? So it's going to be five for both. And now our angle. So tension is going in the same direction as our distance. So we're going to say that that is zero, zero degrees. And since gravity is going straight down, we'd be looking at the 180. So 20 times 5 times 0, cosine of 0. 25 times, 20 times 5 times cosine of 0 gives us 100. 20 times 5 times cosine of 180 gives us negative 100. All right, so the negative 100, we have a positive 100. We want the net work done, so we add both of them. What's a positive 100 and a negative 100? Zero. Why, why is there zero work done if the thing is moving? It is moving, but it's moving at what? So if our speed is constant, Right or a constant velocity because it's going up, you're not going to have an acceleration. So, right, that's where our work should wind up being uh, coming out to zero, total of zero. All right, that next one. Two kilogram tray of dinner pilates is held in the air and carried a distance of five meters to the right. So the first thing we want to do, guys, is draw in. The direction of our distance, so five meters to the right, bing bong. Now, make your little baby coordinate plane. Whatever direction the distance is going, we're going to make that side zero. And then just go counterclockwise, so the top would be 90 degrees. Left would be 180. And 270. Yes, sir. It's kind of how how it is, I guess. I, it's weird. I'm not 100 percent sure. I technically, I guess, if you went the other way, it wouldn't necessarily affect it because to the right side of this coordinate plane. Everything is like positive. Everything on the left side winds up becoming negative. So as long as like 0 and 180 are opposite, if you did 90 down below and 270 up top, it would, would you would still wind up with the same answer. But where does it matter? Like it matters. I mean, zero, the 0 and 180 definitely need to be in the right spot. And then I guess 90 and 270, technically, you could flip. Well, if we're the coordinate plane's like 360, right? So everything's done by 90s. So like, just think about nine. Nine plus nine is 18, right? 180. And then nine plus nine plus nine is 27, 270. You add three nines together, you get 36 or 360. So it would make a full lap around. So it goes 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. Or if you wanted to reverse that, zero. 90, 180, 270, 
back to 360. But 0 and 180 have to be opposite sides because it's a complete like turnaround, right? So when you do your little coordinate plane, make sure that 0 goes in the same direction as the distance. Since distance is going to the right, I'm placing 0 off to the right. And then I know 180 has to be on the opposite side. And then I've just been doing it this way, so I'm going to go 90, 270. Okay, what is my force here for the applied force? 20 newtons. What is the good? And how far do we move? Very good, 90 degrees and 270 degrees. And when you do those out, you're going to get zero and zero. So no work, network on this thing being done is zero. So again, it's the same concept as the dinner plate or like the, you know, helping your mom with the groceries. You're holding the bags upward and you're walking this way. When there's 90 degrees, no work is technically being done, even though you're exerting a hell of an effort, okay, and you're getting tired. If force and distance are perpendicular to each other, no work is being done. Okay, so when a force is applied, Number nine, when a force is applied to do work on an object, does the object always accelerate? No. No, it does not. Why? Okay. Well, number nine, uh, so when a force is applied to do work on an object, does the object always accelerate? No. I mean, there can be, but in some of our examples, like letter E. Moving at a speed. Yeah, you're moving at a constant speed. So when the net forces are equal to zero, the works, the net work should also then be equal to zero. Which, you know, how net force, right, if everything balances out, comes to zero, the object's not going to change its motion, so therefore it's not going to accelerate. So in those ones, basically you could say the net forces on those objects equals zero, which means the network is also zero, which prevents acceleration. Okay, the net force on the object equals zero, which means... F net, all right, so F net equals zero. All right, and so does network which means uh, which means the object is not changing its motion So it doesn't always accelerate. You actually have to have some form of work being done in order for the object to, to accelerate, I guess, in a specific direction. Okay. Now, I'm going to set you up on these ones, and then I want you to – actually, let's do them. All right. Bro, look at this guy's name. Jimney sweeper. Like, like chimney sweeper. Come on, you tell me if you didn't have a name of Jimney sweeper, and you weren't a chimney sweeper, you're missing out on just. I would hire the person on even if they weren't good at their job, I'd hire them just because I think that's just awesome. Jimney sweeper, the chimney sweeper. Come on, come on. All right. So Jim is applying a force of 21.6 newtons downward in an angle of 57.2 degrees with the horizontal to displace the broom a distance of 26.8 newtons. I'm sorry, 2.6.28. Uh, so if this was our object... Okay, and this kind of goes out to the right, 
and it said 57.2 degrees below the horizontal. So we're applying a force in this direction at this angle. 57.2 degrees. And the object is going to move in this direction. So in this case, guys, yes, you 100% are going to use the angle. Now, remember that work is force times distance times our cosine of theta. All right, so that one should be very, very simple. You have the force, you have the distance, and you have the cosine of our angle. So well, you guys will come back for that one. The next one, letter B, guy's name, Ben Pump and Iron. Uh, how dare you? How dare you talk about Ben like that? Okay, Ben Pump and Iron. My man, my man lives at the gym. He, if your name is Ben Pump and Iron, and you don't own a gym, I mean you're missing out. Just saying. So Ben applies an upward force to lift a 129 kilogram barbell to a height of 1.98 meters at a constant speed. All right. So since it's talking constant speed and we're moving in the same direction, that means all right, our applied force going upward has got to equal the weight downward. They have to be equal. Now you see there is no Newton here. There is no Newton available. So I told you guys the other day, or I told you yesterday, and I had you guys write it down in your notes, if they don't give you, if they don't give you force, but they give you mass, you want to use that mass to find our weight, right? So Weight is mass times gravity. So in that case, you're going to do 129 times G. We're using 10 because it just makes it a little bit easier for us. Right? So 129 times 10, that gives us 1290. So weight down is 1290 newtons. And that means the applied force going up also has to be the same because it's moving at a constant speed. So now we know what the applied force is. We know that it's going straight up. So the distance all right, is going up and it's moving 1.98 meters. So since it's going up, zero would be our in the direction of the distance, 90, 180, 270. So work is going to therefore equal FD cosine of the angle. Since we are going straight up and the force applied and the distance are in the same direction, we're using zero. So the force, 1290 times the distance that we move of 1.98 meters times cosine of our angle, which is cosine of zero. Oh, I don't know why I put the little line through it. Cosine of zero degrees, and we plop that in, and I get, let's see, 1290 times 1.98 times cosine of zero. I get an answer of 2,000. 554.2 joules, same age of me, 2,554. Yes, I'm old. And the last one, okay, we got a couple different things going on here, all right? So let's, let's break it down. Constant speed, okay? If this thing is in the elevator, it's going up. So if it's moving straight up at a constant speed, definitely the net force has got to be equal to zero. So the same, same principle, of, uh, you know, we need to know what the tension force is that's pulling this thing up. 
We need to know what the tension force is because that's what's lifting it up. So the distance we should know is moving up, and the distance is how much? 12 floors, but we don't want floors. We want meters, so. And what direction was it lifting? It's saying it's lifting them up. So we have distance. If we know the direction of distance, we can make our mini coordinate plane. That should be 0, 90, 180, 270. Okay, so I know that the uh, angle that I'm using is 0 because it's in the same direction as my distance. And then the force, I don't know what this is yet. So like in the problem before, constant speed, everything's got to balance. So that means so yep, weight and tension have to be the same. So we need to figure out weight first, F sub G. Okay, so to find the weight of everybody in there, how many people are in there? There are 12 people. It says that the average mass of each of these people is how much? 62.8. Now, this will give us the total mass, but we want the weight. All right, so this is our M and G. What do we use? We use 10 for G. So when we multiply those out, what do we get? So 12 times 62.8 times... 10. Hmm? I got 7,536. Anyone else get that? Okay. So, 7,536 newtons for the weight. So, 7,536 newtons going down, which means our tension force, our pull force going up here, has got to be the same. 75. Three, six newtons. So we have distance, we have the force that it's going in, or the force that's moving it up, we have the distance that it's going, and we know what the angle is. So work F D cosine angle. F seven five three six distance. 76.8 meters, and the angle? Okay, so let's throw that in. So this times 76.8 times cosine of zero. Gosh darn, that's a big old number. I get 578764.8. So that comes out, one, two, three. 578,764.8, and what is the unit for work? Bing. Bong. Yeah, let's go. Crushed it. Absolutely.